Hey, I'm Bill Burke, author of Scorpius Rex, and today on Strangely Brilliant we're exploring the world of comic books. But we're not talking about a visionary creator like Frank Miller or Stan Lee. No, our man was a shameful opportunist and a copycat who'd do anything for a buck. And that's kind of what makes him strangely brilliant. He also had a personal effect on me. Now, once upon a time, believe it or not, I was a sweet and innocent child. Just look at me. Oh wait, that's Michael Myers from Halloween. Anyway, that one's me, and I am just adorable. And I probably would have stayed that way, except for maybe watching a few too many late night horror movies on TV. But otherwise, I was on a path to normalcy. Then one day I went to the Hopewell Pharmacy to grab a Spider-Man comic and saw this. It was my first copy of Tales of Voodoo. Voodoo is one of a series of horrendously graphic magazine-sized comics that was actually marketed to children. Yeah, everything you heard about the 1970s is true. I mean, check these out. It's a mind-boggling display of violence, gore, misogyny, and bondage that really makes you wonder what lunatic published these magazines for children. Well, Tales of Voodoo and its companion magazines were all the brainchild of Myron Foss, who was kind of a bottom feeder in the New York magazine world, churning out sleazy tabloids, playboy imitations, and even a mad magazine knockoff. He had a carny's gift for making money without actually spending any, and he was about to catch lightning in a bottle. To truly appreciate his evil genius, let's step a little further back in time to the 1950s, when EC was publishing their classic line of horror comics. Competing publishers like Ajax and Atlas quickly jumped in to get a piece of the pie. But they all went out of business when Dr. Frederick Wortham published his book Seduction of the Innocent, which convinced parents that horror comics would turn their children into drooling psychopaths. So all those competing comics sat moldering in some storage crept until the 1970s, when Foss snapped up the rights for pennies on the dollar. Foss knew he had a ready-made market because Warren Publications was already doing well with their magazine-sized comics like Eerie, Creepy, and Vampirella. But those comics were an astronomical 75 cents, whereas Fass only planned to charge 35 cents for his creations. He even named his company Eerie Publications to muddy the waters a bit more. Then he brought in a group of underpaid but talented artists to create those incredibly gruesome new covers. He based the covers on the then popular men's adventure magazines, which as you can see are packed with violence, bondage, and misogyny. Foss just had his artists replace the Nazis with werewolves, mummies, vampires, and Frankenstein doing stuff they never did in those old movies. At first I thought these things were incredible, with covers pulled right out of my nightmares that even included my favorites like Dracula and Frankenstein. But even at that tender age I quickly figured out that I was being fleeced. You see, there must have been a limited number of those old 1950s horror comics. So Foss just began reprinting all the stories in his other magazines. Even worse, he was so cheap, he would have his artists paint over their old covers and pass them off as new. This was clearly one shoddy operation, and I stopped buying his comics. It was my first case of consumer awareness. Now, Myron Foss was an amazing character. He had multiple companies cranking out dozens of short-run magazines 
using a core of overworked and underpaid writers and artists. One of his alumni was Al Goldstein, who went on to found Screw Magazine. But Fass had another fascination, guns. In fact, he was usually packing at the office. Foss eventually ran out of comics to reprint, but he kept the presses rolling with magazines like Official UFO and Ancient Astronauts, chock full of allegedly true flying saucer stories, all made up by his writers. He kept the blood flowing with true crime magazines and the amazingly repulsive Violent World, which exploited whatever tragedy was in the news that month. Eventually, Foss got out of publishing and moved to Florida to pursue his other love by opening a gun shop. Probably selling assault rifles to his old readers who were suppressing a lot of bottled up rage. Foss died in 2006, leaving behind a legacy of twisted young minds. Hey, maybe those gruesome comics help explain how I got to be the way I am today. Hats off to Mike Howlett, whose book, The Weird World of Eerie Publications, chronicles all the gory details. It is highly recommended. And that was the strange saga of Myron Foss, Tales of Voodoo, and its companion comics. Now, if you want some quality horror reading, check out my novel, Scorpius Rex, which is available on Amazon. And please visit my website, williamburkauthor.com, where you'll find more videos, articles, and book excerpts. And if you know of someone who should be in a strangely brilliant video, please let me know. Thanks for watching.